Good evening, Walden Community Church. It's beginning to look a lot like Christmas. And this is the time when you will hear a lot of Christians say that Jesus is the reason for the season, right? That's what we say. But uh, why do we say it? I mean, what is that phrase? What does it mean? I mean, I know it rhymes, it rhymes, but is it clear? Do we think it's clear to the world or could it be a little cloudy? Our concert tonight was called Jesus, the Advent of the Messiah. And we're in a season of Advent right now at Christmas time. And Advent just means arrival, but it's not the arrival of Christmas. And it's not the arrival of Santa Claus. It's the arrival of Jesus. And it's for that reasoning, I think, that maybe the phrase gets confusing. Because then with that question, we have to also ask, why? Why did Jesus come? John Wesley was a preacher. He was the founder of the Methodist movement. And as he lay dying on his bed, his student asked him, tell me what I should write and I will write it down. And John Wesley said, best of all is this, God with us. That's the word Emmanuel. Matthew translates it as God with us. And that's what I wanna talk about because I know we all enjoy the sentimentality, the pageantry of Christmas. We all enjoy the warm fuzziness of Christmas, but Emmanuel is massive. And I think it should alter how you live. Emmanuel is life anchoring. It is life changing. God with us, Christmas. The reason for Christmas, the reason for the waiting, the, the reason that a Messiah was needed is God with us. Why did Jesus come? Simply to be with us. That one idea alone this Christmas should change you and it should change how you live. Matthew 1, says, all this took place to fulfill what the Lord had spoken by the prophet. Behold, the virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and they shall call his name Emmanuel, which means God with us. That idea, Emmanuel, it's not confusing. It's so simple, God with us. And, and that means Jesus is God, right? That means Jesus is God. Jesus is the one and only true God. He is the creator of the universe. Jesus is the one who spoke the universe into existence. He is the one who came as a human being to be with you. That's the foundation of Christmas. That's the reason for the season. Matthew starts by saying, Jesus is the one who is spoken about by the prophets. He is the one who we have all been waiting for. He is God with us. That one truth, Emmanuel, this Christmas. Every other hallmark sentimentality, every other catchphrase, that is all secondary because it all flows out of Emmanuel. You're gonna get Christmas cards in the mail this week and next week. What are the covers of the Christmas cards going to say? One will say, peace on earth. Why? because God with us. There is no peace on earth without God. One will say joy to the world. Why? Because the Lord has come. There, there is no joy to the world if that baby is just a baby. I know this is typically a time where we like to talk about the baby, how cute the baby was, how wonderful the baby was, uh, to sing No Crying He Makes, to sing O Little Town of Bethlehem, to sing uh, the Little Drummer Boy song. And, and for as much as we like to make Advent about the baby, it is really about the waiting, the waiting for the Messiah. Because nobody was waiting for a baby. The world wanted to be saved. The world needed to be rescued. And the world needed a God to show up. Jesus is God. That catchphrase is so much a part of my life that it's even, it's, it's, it's been on every single one of my cars. I used to work at the mall and I had to park my car on the top floor of the parking garage. And one time a gentleman was walking out of the mall and he saw my license plate and he said, 
Jesus is God. Since when? And I said, since always. That's what Christians believe. That's what the church believes. We believe Jesus is God. Since when? Since always. And, and it's that one bedrock belief. It's that one foundational truth that sets Christianity apart from everything else. And the critics would say, well, but Jesus never said he was God. Yes, he did. Every single time he healed a bone, every single time he commanded the elements, every single time he forgave sins. Well, you could say people back then didn't believe he was God. Yes, they did. <laughs> Jesus' own family worshipped him. Listen, you could convince a lot of people a lot of things. You might even be able to convince the entire world that you should be worshipped. But to convince your own family to worship you? That's difficult, right? That'd be hard. I, I do magic tricks. I do magic tricks for friends and family. I've done magic tricks for the yacht club, uh, for the school next door. But let, let me tell you, nobody in my family believes I have powers, right? Mary, Jesus' own mom, at the end of the Gospels, we see her in the upper room, in the book of Acts, when the Holy Spirit comes to the church. James, who was Jesus' brother, dies for his faith. Now in December right now, you're going to see some shows probably on the Discovery Channel, right? On the History Channel, you might even see some magazine covers at the grocery store, and they're going to say, who is Jesus? Or who is Jesus really? Or the truth behind the man? And they're going to all claim that they're going to get to the bottom of it all. But if Jesus was not God, how come people that knew him worshipped him? How come people that knew him died for him? Peter was crucified upside down. Why? Because he was 100% convinced. That's why we have four Gospels and not just one. Because everyone was convinced. Buddha had disciples. None of them worshipped him as God. Muhammad had disciples. None of them worshipped him as God. So I don't care what the Discovery Channel says or Time Magazine. They weren't there. We have eyewitnesses to his birth, eyewitnesses to his miracles, his life, his death, his resurrection, and we have an empty tomb. We have an empty tomb. We have no grave to this day. Sir Isaac Newton died almost 300 years ago. You can go and visit his tomb. Elvis Presley died. You can go and visit his grave. George Washington, our very first president, he is buried at Mount Vernon. Where is Jesus buried? Look, we have found the Titanic. We found Pompeii. We found King Tut's tomb. We found the Rosetta Stone. We found King Richard III's grave. We found the Dead Sea Scrolls. We have never found the body of Jesus. So I don't care what anyone says. The only option you are left with is that Jesus' body is not on this earth because he is Emmanuel. He is God. This Christmas, you may be wrestling with these questions. And I would just invite you, you know, pick any religion out of the grab bag and look at what they say about heaven and immortality and reward. And they're going to tell you that reward is given through goodness, through acts, through works. And those religions are all founded on teachers. And those teachers or those prophets they teach you how to live. Christianity says that morality and goodness, they're not good enough. It's not easy to be a good person. I've had friends that said, well, you know, if heaven's real, if God's real, then when I go to heaven, I'll just explain to God. I'll just reason to God. I'll just show him that I was a good person. But whoever said that Going to heaven is the reward for being good. Jesus says in John, I am the way and the truth and the life, and no one comes to the Father except through me. Who goes to heaven without Jesus? No one. 
All my life growing up, I have heard the criticism that Christians were arrogant and narrow-minded, all because we say that we have the one true religion, that no other religions take you to God, only Jesus. And the world gets mad because the world likes options. In 2022, we love options, right? We have options for everything. We have options for our cell phone service. We have options for cable, for movies, for streaming. We have options for cars, everything, right? Ketchup, you go to the ketchup aisle, there are 27 different brands of ketchup. There's even two different ways to spell it. <laughs> what are the ingredients? Tomatoes, salt, onion, that's it. And in America, we have 27 options. So we do the same thing with religion. We do the same thing with God. We do the same thing with Christmas, right? We all celebrate Christmas differently. We all have different traditions, different favorite things. Why should God be any different? Well, I started this all off by saying, why did Jesus come? Why Advent? Jesus says in John 3, for God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world, but in order that the world might be saved through him. So the arrival of a baby in a manger, the same thing the wise men came to see, the shepherds came to see, that was the salvation of God, the rescuer, the redeemer of the world. God sent his only son, and that son gave his life. And so, there is no other way to receive a gift but to take it, right? If God gave you his son, if Jesus gave you his life, then our response is to receive it, to take it. On Christmas, God came to be with you. He gave himself to you. That's the gospel. Christmas is God with us. Christmas is joy to the world. The Lord is here. And the response is, let earth receive her king. Christmas is Emmanuel. Christmas is God with us. He's touchable, he's huggable, he's lovable. Every single year, I want to show you this picture. It's my favorite Christmas picture. It's Morgan Weasling's Kissing the Face of God. And prior to Mary, prior to that moment, the only person who had ever known God that intimately before was Moses. Moses had a personal relationship with God. He talked to God, walked with him as a friend. And one time, Moses got a little casual with God and said, please show me your glory. And God said, I will make all my goodness pass before you and will proclaim before you my name, the Lord, and I will be gracious to whom I will be gracious and I will show mercy on whom I will show mercy. But, he said, you cannot see my face for man shall not see me and live. Moses said, show me your face. And God said, you can't handle it. But at Christmas, we get to experience the one thing that Moses was denied. We get to meet God. Jesus is God. And at Christmas time, we celebrate God with us, you and me. Now, notice though that Matthew does not say God for everyone. Matthew does not say God with everyone. Matthew says he is with us. And that's interesting because there's a difference. The word us is defined. The word us is a group of people. But unlike what we might think, us is not some exclusive club. Us is not the rich. Us is not the godly. Us is not pedigree. Us is what we see in the Bible. Us is the people whom Jesus came for. He says he came for the lost. He came for the humble. He came for the afflicted. He came for the outcast. Jesus came for the shepherd. Jesus came for Mary, a teenage mom. Jesus came for Joseph, a blue collar working class father. Jesus also said this about us. Those who are well have no need of a physician, but those who are sick, I came not to call the righteous, but sinners. Look, when you are sick, when you are lost, you 
cannot heal yourself and you cannot rescue yourself. If religion is trying to tell you to work harder, to be a better person, to fix yourself, then I'm going to suggest to you that that religion is a lie. It's a lie. Because sick people cannot heal themselves. Lost people cannot find themselves. And if you're sick and you're lost, then Christmas is the answer. Emmanuel is the answer. God with you. Of course, Christmas is going to be fun this year. It's going to be sentimental. It's going to have all the feelings, right? But Christmas is also in danger of being wimpy and having no oomph behind it. It's going gonna, it's gonna to be fleeting and it's going to be expensive when January comes around and you can start getting your bills. Unless you can build your Christmas on a stronger, more permanent, more truthful foundation. And that is Jesus is God. Emmanuel. That's what you need to experience this Christmas. Experience it fully. Jesus is God. So that means th there's nothing in your life that he can't resolve. There is no problem in your life that is too big. So give him all your problems. Have you given Jesus all of your problems? Every problem from this year, every problem you're worrying about next year, have you laid it all down at his feet? And if you haven't, then why? Because he is God. There is nothing you can keep from him. And if, if you believe that Jesus is God, if you believe that Christmas means Emmanuel, then every single part of your life should be his. It's all his. He is God. Jesus came from so far away to be with you. To be with you. So don't let anything stand between you and him. Don't let anything get in your way. Don't let any walls be constructed between having a relationship with him. Nothing, nothing in the world is worth it. Break any barrier that stands between you and a relationship with God. Christmas, Emmanuel, is that he came to be with you. The reason for the season, the reason for Christmas was to be with you. Let's pray. Lord, we thank you for Christmas and we thank you for Emmanuel. We thank you for the baby, but we thank you for the Messiah, the King. We thank you for salvation and for the rescue of a lost and broken world. Lord, this Christmas, may we build our celebration on the foundation that you are here with us, that you came to be with us and to save this lost world. We pray for each one here that they know you and have a personal relationship with you, that each one listening to this voice, this recording right now, loves you and wants to deepen that relationship with you. We pray for a Merry Christmas for each one here. Amen. Well, if you're watching this right now, uh, it is December 10th, and that was our Christmas concert. Uh, we're going to have another Christmas concert tomorrow. So on the 11th, December 11th at 6.30, uh, Walden Community Church will have its Christmas concert. And uh, please come. Our, our choir has been practicing for months and months and months. It's completely free. It's open to the community. Come early. Come early. Uh, get a seat. Um, please invite your friends and neighbors. Like I said, there's no cost to you whatsoever. We want to give this as our Christmas gift to you. We want to celebrate Christmas. We want to celebrate Advent. And we want to celebrate Emmanuel. Have a blessed Christmas. I'll see you soon.